Welcome to CAM Look, your twice weekly dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. When every Tuesday and Thursday, a member of the CAM family shares a work from our permanent collection and poses a few questions for discussion. We hope you'll check back at 10 a.m. for a new work and a new conversation. Hi, my name's Emily, and I'm the Director of Learning and Interpretation at the museum. And when planning CAM Looks, we think about a lot of different things. Is a work of art connected to a special exhibition? Is it a favorite in the collection? Or sometimes we take a deep dive into our database and look for hidden gems. And that's what I did today. I thought, hmm, 1975, let's look up that date or that year. And why 1975? Well, I recently celebrated a birthday and that's the year I was born. And I was really interested to see which works either came into the collection in 1975 or were made in 1975. And I found these really cool posters um, from the 1920s and 30s and 40s by an American artist who worked in Britain named Edward McKnight Coffer. I hope you enjoy learning about him as well. Edward Coffer was born on December 14, 1890 in Great Falls, Montana. Shortly after his birth, the family moved to Evansville, Indiana. His parents divorced when he was about three years old. His mother found work as a laundress and put him in an orphanage for the next two years. In 1904, at around the age 14, Coffer left school and found work as a scene painter at Evansville's Grand Opera House. Three years later, he joined a traveling repertory theater working as a painter. By 1910, Edward was living in San Francisco and working by day at a bookstore, Paul Elder and Company, while taking evening classes at the Mark Hopkins Institute of Art. In 1912, Joseph McKnight, a patron of the bookstore, so impressed by Coffer's artistic abilities, offered to pay for his travel to Paris to further study. In tribute to him, Coffer adopted the name McKnight. En route to Paris, P Coffer stopped off in Chicago and began formal study at the Art Institute of Chicago. In 1913, upon conclusion of his studies, the young artist left the U.S. by ship from Baltimore, passing through Algiers, Naples, and Venice before arriving in Munich to study for the summer. He arrived in Paris in the autumn of 1913 and began classes at the Académie Moderne. On July 7, 1914, Coffer married Grace Ehrlich, an American pianist studying in Paris. Within weeks, World War I broke out in Europe, forcing them to leave France for Durham, England. By 1915, the young couple had established themselves in London, where Coffer would remain for most of his career. That same year, after a meeting with Frank Pick, the publicity manager of the Underground Electric Railways Company of London, or as we know it, the London Underground, Coffer received his first commission for two posters advertising travel on the company's trains to some of London's rural surroundings. This is where his future career as a leading graphic designer truly began. He would continue to work for the London Underground for over 25 years. The company commissioned Coffer to design posters of beautiful local landscapes. Coffer wanted to integrate the high art he learned as a painter with commercial appeal. Millions of underground passengers became familiar with his poster art, leading to public acclaim and more work advertising for leading retailers and museums. By the end of the 1920s, Coffer was not only working in advertising, but also theater scenery and costumes, book illustrating, and even designing office spaces. Coffer believed fervently that modern art should move beyond the walls of museums and galleries to infiltrate all elements of daily life. His belief that innovative expression should be matched by social and cultural engagement marked him as a modernist. He championed the principle that a designer held a responsibility not only to his client, but also to the public. A poster, he believed, was a work of art that served the dual purpose of informing people and aiding industry. It was an opportunity both to share important information and to int introduce people to a new way of seeing. With the onset of World War II, Coffer and his family left London for New York City on July 1, 1940. Back in the United States, Coffer struggled to establish himself. Despite an exhibition of his work at the Museum of Modern Art in 1937, Coffer found himself at odds with the competitive American world of advertising and lost the notoriety he had had back in Britain. He did find long-term work with American Airlines and also created several World War II posters and was commissioned for other posters for American clients like the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. Coffer passed away in 1954. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about Edward McKnight Coffer today. You know, he was a really interesting uh, graphic designer before graphic design was really a field. And he was working in advertising and creating beautiful works of art. And it made me think, what advertisements are sticking with us today? Or do we remember from our youth that really resonated with us? I would love to hear your thoughts below. 
And I'm gonna share this ad from the company Benetton. And this is something from the 1980s that I very much remember um, gracing the pages of my Seventeen magazine. And it always stuck with me um, because it was a little different than all the other ads that you were seeing. So I would love to hear about your, you know, ads that you've remembered and have really stuck with you. And hopefully you wanna share why. Thanks and have a great day.